One MetLife Stadium Drive, one of the two NFL stadiums shared by two teams. But we're not here to talk about that or that team across the hall. Keith Ippolito and John Rad are only here to talk about the true football giants. We talk Giants football and wherever else the conversation may take us. So deal with it. This is the Shared Stadium Podcast. I got good news. I got bad news. Really? Oh, my God. <laughs> Welcome into the Shared Stadium Podcast. <laughs> I'm John Rad, along with my teammate, Keith Ippolito, where we will talk all things New York Giants. Uh, it's been a few weeks that we've been off because, you know, let's just be honest. Sometimes life lifes. So we apologize, but we are back. We are here. And before we dig into all of the good stuff today, Keith, what's happening, brother? Doing good, man. Uh, life is good other than being a Giants fan. I mean, um, hey, at least, at least we got the Yankees who clinched uh, earlier last week. And uh, so we got that going. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, uh, to put it bluntly, same shit, different day if you're a New York Giants fan, right? Oh, we're we're going to touch on that. We're going to touch on the Yankees. We're going to talk on, touch on some New York sports. Um, but, frankly, all right. I, I teased it. I started it. I said, I got good news. I got bad news. Uh, <laughs> here's the good news. Good I news. can guess. I can guess. I can guess. Uh, what's the good news? Does it have something to do with a trade to a certain basketball team? No, we're not even at that point yet. We're, we're starting <laughs> oh. off with, okay, Keith <laughs> doesn't read the show sheet. <laughs> we're going to start with the good news. Because I'm going to be honest with you, and we're going to talk about that here shortly. That might not even be good news. I'm going to tell you about that here in a minute. The good news is, Hey guys, we got a kicker. <laughs> yeah, we got a kicker. We we finally figured that part out. <laughs> we got a kicker. We were smart enough to finally say, "Hey, our our old kicker. <laughs> he's the part of his body that he needs the most isn't feeling that great. <laughs> so we need to go and find somebody else, and we found one." Um. So we have a kicker, um, but here's he, uh, Greg Joseph, by the way, no relation, yeah, Gre- no relation to Brandon Joseph or uh, yeah, whoever. Um, yeah, here's here's the bad news. As we played the Dallas Cowboys, our kicker got to kick and he did very well. What, yeah. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Five, five field goals. Five. Hey, our 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 field goal kicker might get the uh, MVP of the team for our Player of the Year award. Man, my God! No, only person getting MVP is the ball boy. The ball boy, okay. <laughs> but notice what I said. He kicked five field goals. He didn't kick any extra points. No, nope, no kick nope any PATs. PATs. No, nope. we scored fifteen points and zero touchdown. So look at it like this. <laughs> We lost to a team that scored no no touchdowns, and we figured, yeah, I know. Hey, hey we can do that, so we're going to yeah. do the same thing. Yeah, God. exactly. Uh, it's oh my God, man. I it, you know you you look you look at this game, and you know, uh, I, you know, I, I'm I I you know I'm ready to move on from Daniel Jones, but I mean. You know, the last two games or three games, uh, you know, I can't really put it on him. He's actually hasn't done anything crazy enough to lose us the game. Honestly, if I look at especially the Dallas game, um, I, I mean, well, I think it was it was a mixture between Jones and the wide receivers. I mean, Jones sure. obviously can't throw the ball. Well, I'm not going to say he can't throw the ball deep because we have seen him throw the ball deep, but. I don't know if it's like a confidence issue or a mechanics issue because especially that one play where he had the the you know basically the offsides penalty and he underthrew Slay by probably like two three four yards or whatever it was. It's just like man, that's so frustrating. But then you know you see guys like uh, Slay. Na- I mean, all of them neighbors. They're all dropping balls, man. And I mean, and it, it you know it's costing us games and even stupid penalties in the red zone. There was that one. 
um, where there was an illegal man, you know, down the field on a in a red zone play. So it's uh, it's a lot of things, man. I, I mean, again, I'm ready to move on from Daniel Jones, but I mean, you know, if, if I if I'm being objective or whatever, especially the Dallas game, and you know, it, you know, it's not all on him, man. Is it Daniel Jones stepped up that game, or is it Dallas is that much of a dumpster fire too? I mean, let's face facts on something. I'm not taking away. I'm not discrediting what you said. Daniel Jones didn't cost us the game, but he didn't do. He didn't take over the game to put us in a position to win, and that's the part that's frustrating because when you go back to the hard knocks. You said you're not going to pay a guy $70 million a year to hand the ball off to a guy who's making $40 million a year. I'd much rather have the guy making $40 million a year still here because at least that way, when we were what? uh, uh, When was it? 52-41. We made a 22-yard field goal. So that means we were what? At about the 12-yard line. Our our $40 million running back could have punched it in. Our, our $70 million quarterback did not find a way to get the ball in the end zone. Oh, yeah. And I I definitely think, especially because I'll be, I'll be honest, I mean, that I thought the offensive line played pretty, pretty well on against the Cowboys. Uh, I mean, you know, I'm not usually a big PFF stats guy, but I mean, uh, the offensive line basically allowed 11 pressures uh the entire game and i think i maybe like one sack i it, like the uh, thomas and illuminor basically had it on lockdown on both sides in the tackle position so i th- i thought the offensive line did a spectacular job uh or a pretty solid job against uh the cowboys and i feel like we haven't been able to say that in a really long time too it it's like when you watch this team i feel like one part clicks really well, whether it's this game, it was the offensive line, but the quarterback and the wide receivers are what, like nobody's ever in a full, fully synced or whatever, if that makes any sense, you know? We're not going to be right now, and I expected this because one of the things that we don't have is we don't have that definitive leader out there that person that is going to on offense and defense, who's going to just grab somebody by the shoulder pads and say, Hey, suck it up, get your job done. Now Mm -hmm. I'm with you. I'm going to give some positives here in a second because there was some positives that were going to go there, but I'm going to keep going with the negatives for right now. Yeah. We need a running back. We had, like, I get it. I'm going to beat up on Daniel Jones. I'm going to go down that road on Daniel Jones. We are 30th in the NFL with rushing yards. 30th. Yep. Ain't but 32 teams. And I can take a wild shot in the dark who the other two are behind us. We are mm-hmm. 30th. And the fact that that's why we had to kick so many field goals. So how do you feel now, Cal- uh, Giants front office, that you gave away our running back? We are tied for 29th in points four yeah yeah so I, that, we gotta do something to put some points on the board yeah man it, it's 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 the run game it's it's the offense and you know uh, even another stat that's is damning and it's you know encapsulate the you know the start of the season in a nutshell is we have 12 drop balls on the season. There's in which is the 30 is 31. The Browns have 14 at 32. So like if you're always dropping ball, like again, you know, if you, if you're always consistently dropping these balls and you know, not all of them are, you know, fantastic passes, but some of them are pretty damn egregious. Um, And, you know, one wide receiver that I'm kind of want to pick on too. And like, maybe, Dable should send a message and like bench him for this upcoming game is Darius Slay and maybe throw in Jalen Hyatt or whatever. Uh, you know, send a message, man, because, it, you know, it, why, why should he, why should he get a pass? Uh, you know, you know, I'm not saying Jalen Hyatt is probably going to be the answer or whatever. I mean, sure. Yeah. Darius Slay is a more talented receiver, but if you're dropping the ball, what good are you? You know? I mean, but if we're at that point, 
And, and let's be fair. If we're at the point we're sending messages, and let's send one to the quarterback. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like if we're at that point. So that's why I can't say that yet. And, and that's why I can't go down that road yet of let's send a message. At this point in time, it's knuckle up time where we are sitting in last place in the NFC East. We are sitting in the bottom half of the entire league, probably only followed by the Bengals. Yeah. Panthers. There's yeah, I mean, but yeah, Panthers. bottom of the yeah, bottom of the barrel. Yeah. We're not even bottom of the barrel. We're that sticky stuff underneath the barrel. So <laughs> at this point in time, there's a lot of other things that have to be looked at. But you and I were talking. And if we're gonna put some if we're gonna send a message to somebody, is it time to send a message to Brian Dable? And I'm asking I'm asking the question. I'm not saying yeah. I'm ready to put them on the hot seat. But yeah. At this point in time, when I'm looking at this team and I'm looking at the mistakes that have been made from leadership, him being a part of it, at what point do we, because that has to be affecting the locker room vibe as well. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, when you're in a, you know, a crappy situation and you're constantly losing and you're losing the way you are. Yeah. I could only imagine that that locker room, will, it will not can imagine the things that I read, especially after that Cowboys game is that I read it was as bad as it's, you know, been like some of these play, which I actually, when I read that, I was actually, I kind of liked that because it made me, made me know that some of these players actually give a shit like, and they're not just like, you know, in the clubhouse celebrating and blah, 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 or whatever. But yeah, I mean, this locker room is definitely down, especially when you're losing games the way you're down. I mean, but you know, back to what you were asking about Dable is, you know, I, I still don't want to pull the plug on him. Um, I, I, I still think he's a very offensively gifted. I think he's very talented. You know, he's his he's got a good resume, whether it's at Alabama, you know, you know what he did with Josh Allen and the Bills. Um, you know, uh, you know, I think he's I think he's a very gifted and very smart play caller. Sure, is he, you know, is he had some blunders this year, but I would I want to see him. I want to give him a season with a legitimate NFL quarterback, whether that's get rid of the us. one we have. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm with you. Next season, I, I, I don't expect Daniel Jones to be here. I, I, I mean, I think we've seen enough. Uh, you know, it's time to pull the plug on that. I, you know, I don't know if it's going to happen this year or not. Maybe if it gets really bad you know, worse than it already is. Sure. Maybe they go to, you know, uh, Tommy Cutlets or, you know, whatever, <laughs> uh, um, you know, <laughs> but I, I do want to see Brian Dable with a legitimate quarterback, whether if that's with bringing in a, you know, an NFL, a veteran or drafting someone in the draft next year. Here's the thing you said that I don't like though. And here's where I'm going to disagree with you. All I'm right. going to agree, but disagree. Brian Dable. Good offensive coach, 100%. I'm not taking that away from him. But we've ne we've made no bones about it. For you guys who listen, long-time listeners, which isn't very long, <laughs> who like, subscribe, <laughs> follow, thank you for tuning in. <laughs> Dan Quinn was the head coach here in Atlanta. Dan Quinn sucked as the head coach here in Atlanta. Dan Quinn went out to Dallas and became the defensive coordinator out in Dallas and did a fantastic job as the defensive coordinator out in Dallas. The reality has to set in on somebody, on people at some point in time to understand that not everybody's meant to be a starter. Some people need to be the backup. Mm -hmm. And could that be Brian Dable is, hey man, you're, you're an OC. You're an yeah. assistant coach. This head coaching thing ain't for you. And that's okay. It's yeah. okay. You can be our OC and we get you a real quarterback and you go get me Bill Belichick and you go get me a, 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 a whoever. I can't even think of whoever else. Yeah, yeah. But you go get me a solid coach and, and somebody who at this point in time, I don't want you to be a friend of the team. I want, oh, yeah. I want the team to hate you because all you're focused on is winning. And I don't feel like that. I feel like it. he's made, he's heard the media and he's even said to himself, I got time. And you don't, you don't. 
So yeah. am I personally saying I want to turn the, the fire on underneath his feet yet? No, not yet. But it is something that we need to think about, too, that let's throw the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah, I, I mean, oh, yeah, I, I mean, if it takes if things take a turn for the worse, you know, I guess, you know, it would, <laughs> I would say it would have to get as bad as it was when Joe Judge was here. I mean, that was just it got to a point where it was like you 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 just have to leave like you, um, we've it, enough is enough, Um, you know. Again, I, you know, I, I'm not there yet. You know, I, again, like I, you know, to, re- to repeat again, I would just love to see him with a legitimate quarterback, whoever that is, you know, I'm not sure who it's going to be probably going to be someone in the draft th- next year. Cause I, I mean, you know, you look at the remaining of the schedule is like, I, you know, I don't, I don't really see where there's many wins coming from, you know, we got oh, Seattle yeah. this coming, this coming week and, you know, Seattle's three and oh, and I, I mean, I think they're down 21. Last I saw, they were down 21 seven, I think, going into the half. Um, but they're a good team, man, real good team. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> I mean, we could be like one and six, you know, going into basically November, and yeah, I, I mean, I just, okay. I, look, I don't know where, I don't know where the wins are coming at this point, man. I really don't. And to be perfectly honest with you, I mean, the Browns one, you kind of feel like it was luck. Maybe, yeah. maybe we beat the Bengals because they seem to be a dumpster fire right now. Yeah, they have a lot of issues. Uh, and that gives but, us uh, a but win. They're, that... But they're a much more talent. You know, they have a lot of issues, but they're a much more talented team they are than we are. And that's, I mean, uh, you know, that's, uh, yeah. Truth be told, I mean, the Browns are a more talented team than we are. Oh, 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 100%. Oh, of course. And so that's I, why I say I did not I did not expect us to win that game, especially being in Cleveland at all. So that's why I said the Bengals could we could luck up. I mean, being and I'm I'm going with the optimism now. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going I'm being optimistic now because the Eagles didn't exactly look like a top-tier team. Uh, no, they night. got they got they got spanked by the Bucks. I it was like yeah. thirty three to something. I can't remember. I think it they have a touchdown or something. Oh, uh, uh, Jalen Hurts threw a pick six, so it was a yeah. rough game for him. And I get it. His starting wide receivers are hurt. Now mm-hmm. here's here's going to be the real test for our defense because Saquon Barkley is going to have a chip on his shoulder, and he's coming back to New York to to make a point. Mm-hmm. He is going to play like we saw him play. I can't think of what game that was last year where he really just took over in the fourth quarter. And yeah, I think yeah. We're going to see a lot of that to cover up for the fact that the receivers are hurt. Jalen Hurts is, is not playing that great right now. Mm-hmm. And I think that's going to be it because after that, it becomes, I mean, the back stretch of the year, starting from the end of the year going forward, Eagles, Colts. Falcons, yeah. Ravens, Saints, yeah. Cowboys, Buccaneers. We play <clears throat> the Panthers, excuse me, in November, mm-hmm. and we'll see them a little bit better. But in saying that out loud, we might be only looking at a 3 1 season. Yeah. I mean, it's very possible. I, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, up. Eh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I mean, at this point, I mean, uh, you know, the season's pretty much already over at this point. I mean, I'm assuming I I don't ex- even if we get a win in Seattle, I feel like it just kind of teases us, you know, to maybe giving us a false sense of hope where, uh, oh yeah, you know, you're a delusional Giants fan. Okay, maybe you know they can make a run. No, I, you know, to be honest with you, at this point, it's like you know, you never want to see your teams lose. Of never, but I, I mean. I'm realistic, man. We we suck. We're not winning anything this year. So, I just start the start the tank start the tankathon, John. <laughs> but that's the problem, and this is the problem I lamented on all summer long. The problem is we paid we overpaid for a quarterback, and some people would even argue. And this is where, to me, I know the NFLPA won't step in and do anything. 
But the NFL PA kind of has to step in because you can't tell me this is the going rate for a quarterback. Because as I'm looking at the quarterback play right now, the quarterback mm-hmm. play in the NFL is abysmal. Where once upon a time we had the conversation where it was Patrick Mahomes, and then mm-hmm. it was like, you know, your Josh Allen's, your Joe Burrows. Yeah, uh, yeah. We threw Tua in there. We mm-hmm. threw Jalen Hurts in there. And then it was like a big drop off. Right now, it's like it, Pat Mahomes, Josh Allen, yeah. and that's and the drop off. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, I feel like even, you know, that first list putting two in there was being generous because I, you know, I, I, you know, I still don't know, you know, what he is. I mean, not to mention that he obviously can't stay, you know, can't stay healthy with all the concussions or whatever. So, yeah, I mean, the quarterback play has just been completely abysmal this year, this season. I probably some of the worst I've seen in a long time. And, I still say it. I I enjoy listening to uh, Cam Newton's podcast, and Cam Newton has said it. He said he would love to have been to some place like with the Texans, where he can help coach up a young quarterback, uh, like they have out there. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree that you can get a Cam Newton. There's even a small part of me, if he, if he wanted to, I would have even taken brace for it. Because y'all going to call me crazy oh, when I say it. Oh, oh God. I would have taken Matt Ryan as the backup to Daniel Jones. And if Matt Ryan wants to go out there and play before he retired, I would have I would have welcomed that. I would have welcomed that. I mean, yeah, I mean, I so I would have liked him just because he's a very – very strong veteran pr- veteran and he's yep. a pr- a very real yep. professional um you know uh, you know I'm, i don't want us to sound like i'm knocking him because i think matt ryan's a hell of a quarterback and deserves to be in the hall of fame and i i do think he'll probably get in there one day but so yes yeah, sp- his time at the colts yeah i mean it, it he really did drop off there was a you can tell Father Time had caught up with him pretty quickly, and I mean, again, that's not a knock on him. I mean, Father Time is always undefeated, as we always know, John. So, um, but just I guess you know, just from you know, a veteran's being a veteran presence in the locker room. Yeah, that's all I would have been. I would I would have been okay with that. Think about this. Go with me with this. Think back to what year was that? Where. Uh... Odell Beckham Jr., the Giants had just made the playoffs, and mm-hmm. they went down to Miami before they went uh, to Green I Bay. I believe that was 2016, was it not? I think so. 16, might have I been believe 15. It, the boat trip. I believe yes. that was 2016. Imagine having, and, and this is not a knock on Eli Manning. It's not. Mm-hmm. But Eli wasn't that boisterous leader to me. But imagine having prime Tom, not even prime but tom brady with the buccaneers oh uh, yeah brett Favre with the with the jets kurt, yeah yeah kurt warner with the arizona cardinals who could have taken mm-hmm. that team and said what are you doing this yeah. is how we do it that's yeah what, that's the thing i'm afraid of is i'm not listening to daniel jones i'm not listening to to, to danny devito <laughs> dude sleeping on his mom's couch like I'm looking around and I'm like I'm looking at this roster and I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rookies. Another what looks like nine, ten second year players. Yeah. Like I got two players un- that have been ten years, two players that have been nine years, two yeah. that are eight, and then it drops to five years. I have guys who are just getting to their major payday. And I'm looking for a leader on this team who don't have it yet. And that's what I think we need. That's what's missing from this team. Outside of everything else, that needs to be there right now to cement everything going forward. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, it's hard for me to argue against that with you right now, to be honest. I mean, yeah, I mean, there definitely needs to be someone who is a big vocal presence in this locker room. and. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I just, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know where it's coming from at this point, man. I, it's, 
eh, it's it's just worse. We have so many flaws. I mean, you know, but between the wide receivers, the running backs, the, don't get me st- the cornerbacks. Uh, I mean, God Almighty, and and e- and even and you know, Thib- Thibodeau and um. You know they were bas- they were non-existent against the Cowboys the other day. No, Thibodeau. One of the things that and people won't notice it. Thibodeau was doing his job because he he sealed off the end very well. And the thing I liked about Thibodeau that I really saw there was one play where he got back there and he shouldn't have been able to catch up to Dak, and he yeah. caught, he tracked him down. And I like that. Those are the things, like, that's the positives I have to take away at this point in time. And and at this point in time, I'm giving out uh, participation trophies, and that's what I got (laughs) to give them. Now, let's continue. Shared Stadium Podcast, the podcast of uh, participation trophies. Uh And what do you want? Be miserable the rest of the next three years? Uh, No, not not particularly. Not particularly. That's really it. Like, you know, like right now. I know everyone's happy. Everyone's excited as the New York Knicks have made a move. They traded <laughs> uh, for Cat Williams. Uh, Cat Williams. Cat Carl- Williams. Yes, oh, all right. For Cat Williams. We got an, okay. Another. They traded for Carl I Anthony. Did, I, I think I have read that Cat Williams can ball, though, right, John? I, I, don't bring me You're into that. You're not sure? Look. Okay. Keep in mind, Cat Williams listens to this. He he going to put this and that comment we made about Diddy and you together and you know, it's a whole new thing. So, oh, gee, I, oh, geez. I digress. But they got Carl Anthony Towns. They traded away Dante DiVincenzo and uh, uh, Jackson. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, away for it. I know everyone's excited because Carl Anthony Towns is a big name. Mm-hmm. To me, that's all he is. Now, I will say, I feel better, though, if he comes in and he's healthy, then I think we now have a shot to win the East. Yeah, I, it, you know, I'm glad you said that because, you know, I feel like, you know, with this trade and over this summer, uh, we kind of lost, you know, two or three dogs and, uh, you know, you kind of hit the nail on the head with it, that Carl Anthony Towns is just a name and, um, you know, yeah, sure. Is it is it exciting? And you know, when did it come? Th- when it when the trade came through on, you know, Friday night, I believe I believe it was Friday night. Yep. Um, you know, on Bleacher Report, yeah, sure. Was I a little exciting or whatever? But then you know, you start reading about it and all the little details or whatever. I mean, yeah, I mean, kind of losing losing some of that identity with the team. I you know, makes you kind of have that little thought in the back of your head, you know? If he comes in and ideally, and people have complimented on this heavily, Shaquille O'Neal, one of the most dominant big men in NBA history, he's lamented how uh, uh, the big men in the NBA now are not, they don't match up to the big men of the past himself and you know him from him after him yeah yeah carl anthony town comes in and can be the dominant presence that he needs that rim protector that big man that can stretch the floor then at this point in time we now have now we can compete against the sixers we now can compete against the celtics we now can compete against the heat and if we can take those three teams maybe the bulls might be the fourth there's not a whole I'll give the Hawks a little bit of love. If we can compete against them at yeah. that point in time, we're now one of the top teams in the East again, and we've gotten better. The thing that I, I'm I gotta see from uh Carl Anthony Towns is and what I hope, he shows up to New York with a chip on his shoulder, angry because he got traded and goes out mm-hmm. there and just puts that dog in. But I don't think yeah. he has that in him. Yeah, honestly, I, you know, that's kind of, you know, that's kind of my biggest concern and question mark about him is, is, you know, because that was like the identity of that Knicks team last year is it was a bunch of gritty players. And, you know, sure, were they probably the most 
not the most talented in the league. Yeah, of course not or whatever, but they played as, you know, you your favorite what you like play with that dog in them, man. And yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm not sure if Carl Anthony Towns has that dog in them, man. I really don't. I'm not sure. I mean, I would, maybe he does come here, like you said, and he has a little chip on his shoulder or whatever. I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I, you know, here's the thing I do know, and you know, it just as well as I do. The thing that I hope he can overcome. If he comes to New York, and he's overtly sensitive. The media is going to eat him up. Oh, and, he's going to get he's going to get crucified. And he's going to his feelings are going to be hurt very early into the year, and that's going to going to break his heart. So I hope he shows up with a little bit of that dog on his show, on his in his heart, and a chip on his shoulder, and ready to rock and roll. Yeah, because uh, I mean, yeah, Minnesota is not not New York media wise. No. So yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna be in a rude, rude awakening um, for that. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it kind of, you know, not that I don't want to be excited about it cause it is, you know, it is a big trade, but I mean, I did like, I did like Randall and Dante DiVincenzo a lot. I thought they were, I thought they were tough, gritty players, man. I don't, I don't know about you. I, I, yeah, I really like those two. I like DiVincenzo. Look, Julius Randle, I was over with. What did I say? Stevens. I'm thinking Lance yeah. Stevens in my head. Yeah, Julius yeah. Julius Randle, I was over with because I'm like, he's older. It's almost that sunsetting time in his career. Mm -hmm. DiVincenzo, what I liked about him was late into a game, he comes in and he's running all over the place and he has a motor that is where that when other teams are worn out, the kid mm -hmm. had a motor and could just go. Go. Yeah, he's go. like the Energizer Bunny, man. He just didn't and I stop. I love that. And that's because what people don't realize, that's been the key to success for Steph Curry, where Steph gets going, running around, point guards are tired, and you're just like, hey, can't keep up. And he's able to pop those threes. DiVincenzo yep. did that. So I'm hoping we can see that from him. Um, also, yeah. while we're on at the time that we're recording this, uh, you know, it's not good. It's not. It, it's bad. Um, we lost one of the greats, a legend, to Kimbe oh, Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know, two, the, two actually today. We're gonna get to that one. If yeah. Lido doesn't read show sheets, I told y'all. He just he he's <laughs> like Chris Domino. If y'all know him, he just goes wherever he wants. <laughs> but we uh, <laughs> we we lost one of the greats to Kimbe Mutombo. Um, big man played for the Knicks, played for the Hawks. But uh, played for the Denver Nuggets, played for the Sixers. But one of the things that he was the big man that invented was the no, 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 no. Yep, the finger yep. whack, and he'll always mm -hmm. be remembered for that and how great he yep. is, and also the uh, philanthropy work that he's done for the Congo and his home country. He's a, he was a great human being, and I've gotten a chance to meet him before. So much fun to talk to. Great energy. Mm -hmm. Um, he'll be missed in the NBA and in this world. Yeah, I mean, I I can only echo everything that you just said. I mean, um, you know, I don't think I've ever heard anybody or read anybody to say a negative thing about the man. Um, you know, I you know, it's all you know. It's sad, not only just you know because he's one of the all time greats, but I mean, you know, he was a hell of a human being, hell of a person, and I mean, he was fun to watch he was one of those iconic players like you said you know you always remember that no 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 i mean i'm you know even remember you know you know nba jams he was always one of my favorite players to play with or whatever not that you know that you know it's you know it's kind of like um um you know makes you a little i guess uh not melancholy i don't know it just makes you uh you know the players that you grew up as a kid or you know they get older it's, or whatever it's, it's kind sad, of sad keith it's yeah just sad. yeah it's sad <laughs> yeah it's sad it's sad it's Stop sad trying yeah to use big words man it's just sad. yeah you know yeah you know i had to pull out my webster's dictionary every once in a while <laughs> you don't even have a webster's dictionary Actually, I, I I probably don't. <laughs> Good. Um, also, today, the it literally just came out about an hour, two hours ago. Um, baseball legend, he's not a Hall of Famer because of the things he did, but 
He is in the WWE Hall of Fame. Pete Rose. He is. He's going to be laughing. He's in the WWE right. Hall of Fame. He's a all Hall right. of Famer. Yeah. Okay. All Look, right. How many all Hall right. of Fames are you in? I, me, me, pro, I'm in zero, and I'll probably never be in any. I mean, <laughs> your picture might be up at some restaurants that says, if you see this man, <laughs> throw him out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah. <laughs> but not the Hall of Fame. But Pete Rose, uh, we you know, his gambling scandal that he was behind. Um, I, I do regret because I did always want to go out to Vegas. Because from what I understand, if you paid him, Pete Rose would autograph anything that you wanted him to say on it. I think there's somebody oh, yeah. out there that has, you know, yes, I did it or I gambled on sports, Pete Rose, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I always wanted to get get a piece of memorabilia signed by him. I just thought it'd be fun to get something silly signed by him. Yeah, I mean, I'm with you on that. I mean, I, you know, I would have loved to have some kind of memorabilia for him, you know. And again, uh, you know, you know, to the Hall of Fame, you know, debate or whatever is, you know, you know, I, I don't want this to sound like I condone anything that he did off the field. And cause you know, there was obviously some other things uh, that we don't really need to get into that were alleged or, you know, that came out after the years or whatever. But, you know, I look at the hall of fame as in, in every sport really is, you know, when did the hall of fame become the hall of fame of moral character? I mean, I can, think of several players in probably every league in their hall of fame where they probably weren't the greatest person off the field. Uh, I mean, uh, let's just, you know, be real. One of the greatest defensive players on our team. Yeah. I, 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 I don't mean, know what you're talking about. I got nothing to yeah, do with this. I, yeah, exactly. You, you know, I got nothing to do with uh, him. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, it, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I I would not be surprised if he gets into the Hall of Fame at some point. Um, you know, I had always, you know, I was always kind of the had, was at the thought that they would probably wait for him to die and that they would do it sometime after that. So, you know, maybe I don't I'm not saying they're going to do it next year, but I would not be surprised if they come around on it. Um, you know, how do you how do you not have the person who is the all-time hit king in the sport, not in the Hall of Fame. You have all the memorabilia, you know, from his career in there. It's a part of baseball. So, uh, you know, how do, how do you not have him in there? You know, I'm just saying. I don't know. I, I, I know that uh, I agree. I even think I, I wouldn't have the thought of, at some point in time, do you just create a wing that is not truly yeah. a Hall of Fame, but mm -hmm. you know, disgraced players who go in there? I know mm -hmm. it'll get a label, it'll get a bad rap, but that way, I think Hall of Fames, there needs to be some level of purity put back into them. And yeah. I think if you wanted to put, you know, Barry Bonds, Mark McGuire, mm -hmm. Sammy Sosa, if you that way those guys go in there they're not the hall of fame they're in a wing pete rose in that wing those guys get to go in there because baseball is such an old sport that has evolved so much and will continue to yeah. evolve that mm -hmm. at some point in time you know you, you look every sport the way it evolves but baseball has had some of the biggest evolutions because it's so old that i think that would be one of the things is just you make another wing you don't have to really put a true honoring ceremony together unless you want to but more mm -hmm. so it's just hey they're here we're going to give them a bust. We're going to give them a plaque. We're going to acknowledge that these people did contribute in a major way to the sport. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I, you, should, you know, would I be okay with that? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I mean, but then I look at, you know, like a guy like Bud Selig is in the Hall of Fame and he was entirely complicit with all the steroid stuff that was going on for all that because it was great for the sport. People were watching. People were going to games, buying merchandise, watching on TV and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, you know, my biggest gripe with the Hall of Fame is, I guess, just 
you know, the hypocrisy on all of it. And, um, you know, some of these baseball writers are just, uh, you know, they need just Uh-oh. need to get out of the way, get out of their way, man. Get out of the way. Hey guys, I didn't say that. I know some of you guys who have Hall of Fame votes. I didn't say that. <laughs> so when I called you to come on, if that day he needs to be off, I, we'll make sure he's off and we'll just air it later. I didn't say that part, okay? I know some of you guys. We're still good. You know, how, how's Taylor Swift do it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're still good. Um, once again, that moment where uh, I got to put my own disclaimer in the opinions of Keith Ippolito are the Keith Ippolito hey. and Ippolito alone, hey. not of the show, that, that... podcast, or John Radcliffe. <laughs> We, you know what? We should make a production piece, uh, a production disclaimer piece for that, and maybe that we run before and after, just because of all, you know, th- some of the things I just say. You know, you never know, John. Well, on the up note, another up note: the playoffs are set. The Yankees they will have a bye, and we'll be waiting for the winner of the uh, Orioles Royals game. Yep. Uh, the Guardians they have a bye. They'll be waiting for the winner of the Astros Tigers. The Dodgers mm-hmm. and the Phillies both have a bye. Dodgers will be yep. waiting for the winner between the Padres and the Braves. Uh, and the Phillies will be waiting for the winners of the Brews and the Mets. Um, yep. If you want, uh, you can call into the Braves radio network. 404-231-1680. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> See? Go too far. Go too far. <laughs> Just call in. Tell them Keith Epolito sent you. See if they let you on air. Probably talk about, not. Talk about whatever you want to talk about. Hey, uh, did you watch? Uh, did, were you able to catch uh, any of the uh, Braves Mets game today by the by chance? Yes, the doubleheader. I watched game yeah. one. Uh, okay. Game one, solid game. Um, uh huh. I expected game two to go the way that it was because it was a long double header. Yeah. Know, yeah. There was rain. It's been a lot of weight. There's a lot of emotion. And mm-hmm. I felt like, and honestly, if I were the Mets, I personally would have kept more of my starters in. I would have wanted yeah. to prove a point the way they started the season. So abysmal, I would have mm-hmm. wanted to prove a point to say, you know what? Watch this. Like, yeah. I would have wanted to be the heel in something, and I don't think they, they were. Yeah, be the – especially because, you know, the obviously the, it goes without saying, you know, Braves and uh, Braves and Mets are, you know, you know, rivals forever in this in this division. And, that you know, this is another thing I wanted to – you know, so I saw, you know, floating around on social media after um, the Braves and the Mets were having almost – not almost, they were having a joint celebration out on – uh, out in the, you know, in the field in Truist Park, you know, players are out celebrating, put, you know, doing the champagne stuff or whatever. I just, I know these players are buddy, buddy and all that now, but I don't, I, I mean, I just, I, I don't recall ever seeing anything like that in uh, professional sports, especially two historic rivals. I, I mean, that was, I, that was a first for me, John. I mean, you got to look at it now. Like the games evolve, Keith, like you go mm-hmm. back and you look at the old players in all sports where we see in football and basketball, the end of the game, they trade jerseys. Michael yeah. Jordan never asked magic Johnson for his Jersey. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> Gary not a chance. Payton, <laughs> Gary Payton <laughs> never asked John Stockton for his Jersey and autographed it at the end. <laughs> Like, no. <laughs> it's a different time. And to be honest, we're the old men now. You didn't see Emmett Smith go ask Terrell Owens when he was with the 49ers after he spiked the ball on the star. Hey, Terrell, let me get your jersey. Yeah, no. come on. Hey, let me get your autograph, Terrell. <laughs> no, like, it, we're the old men now. We, we were happy. Yeah, I know. Like, it. And I can keep going for on and nobody from the New York Knicks ever asked Reggie Miller for his jersey after a game. Uh, no, no, no I can guarantee of you the that New York nope. Knicks asked Reggie Miller for his jersey after a game. <laughs> so I'm like, no, you know, and seeing that we're the old men now, man, and that's what these guys do. It was weird, but I would much rather have seen. I'm gonna keep my foot on your throat. I'm gonna do my best to knock you out of the playoffs. 
And that way I can hold bragging rights to say, ha, look what I did. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, bragging rights. Yeah, I mean, you basically knock out, you know, your rival in that division forever. And yeah, like you said, the way they started the season that, yeah, it puts that little extra Mm -hmm. jab in there and dig in there. You put the knife in and then you twist it again to your arch rival, you know? I mean, because now you get both sides of the coin. Here the Braves started off. Braves are going to be world champions. They're they're champions and champions (laughs) and champions. We're going back again. And, you know, then it got to a point of like, wait a minute. Are we living off of that 2021 high? Like, are we still riding that wave? And then now it's like, oh, my goodness, we might not make the playoffs. And here come the Mets. It's like, oh, my goodness, the Mets are a dumpster fire. And for Mets fans, if y'all are listening, I'll tell you exactly. We're telling you exactly what we're hearing here in Atlanta. The Mets are a dumpster fire. They suck. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I would have wanted to just put that final jab in to just say, see, look what we did. Yeah. It's just. Yeah, exactly. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. I, I, yeah, I, I mean, I, again, to, yeah, you, you put it, you, you summed it up well. We are the old med now, but yeah, I mean, it's still, it's still weird for me to see that, you know, that celebration again. I don't know. They, different times, we're the old men now, John. I mean, I, I guess, uh, we gotta, we gotta, uh, adapt with the times, right, brother? Get off my lawn. I don't have to adapt. <laughs> I can still be the grumpy old. Look, we live in a city. And once, and we're going to talk about that. We're going to go back, circle back to football here in a second. We live in a city that they've created their own rivals. Like, I'm still trying to figure out why Braves fans hate Yankees fans so much. Oh, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't have a reason why or a clue, a clue why? I know why, but I'm sitting yeah. here looking, I'm like, you have there is so many other people that should be ranked before you consider us your rival. So many others. Yeah. Like, okay. Well, yeah. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. And I like it. I like the concept that the New York Knicks and the Atlanta Hawks have become like rivals. Trey Young likes being yeah, the yeah. villain. I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's fair. It's entertaining. That's yeah, fair. I I think it makes the league much more entertaining. You like Braves, y'all have won. Y'all are a historic team. Y'all have done amazing things. You're still not up there with us. No, not even not on a not no, not on a championship level. No, the Braves no. You're still not there with us. So I I get it. Of course not. I know why. Fine. Be angry. Hate us. Whatever. Cool. You're not there yet. Ah, Um but I will say this. Giants fans. As if you're planning on coming down here and seeing the Giants take on the Falcons. I gave you some warnings earlier in the year, and I want to revisit this <laughs> because uh, December 20, what is that? December 22nd is coming uh, quickly. Yes. Yep. You know, we're already in October, basically. Um, Don't come down here talking trash. Number one, the way the Giants look. Definitely don't go back. Hey, Giants can't. They shouldn't be able to talk. You, you can't talk anything to anyone. I well, mean. Like at this point in time, <laughs> there is a such thing as Southern hospitality. Just take the Southern <laughs> hospitality. If somebody says, hey, you want a dog? You want a brat? You want a burger? Just take it and talk yeah. to them and say, hey, where's a place to get some good wings from? Exactly. Where, where, you know, who has the best wings in town? Uh. You know, is the world of Coca Cola worth the tour? I'm gonna be. It's Sunday. I'm staying for Monday. Should I go for the world of Coca Cola? Uh, uh, um, uh, you know, is the aquarium all it's hyped up to be? Yeah, is the aquarium. You know, uh, shameless plug for someone. Um, hey, where does the where all does the Atlanta bike tours go? I want to sign up for that. Shameless plug to Atlanta bike tours. Love y'all. Um, all right, all right. Um. You know, ask people that kind of, and be nice, be friendly. You know, like we're the same people. Like when yeah. we say shorty, they say shouty. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, we we wear Timberlands, they wear polo boots. We we the same. We, we yeah, we the same. 
yeah, the same yeah, people. Pretty, yeah, pretty much. You know, pretty um, much. Um, you know, let's not mention the the two uh, Super Bowl championships that we got. Let's just let's let that go. Okay, let's not yeah. even bring that up. Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah, you're good with that. Um, yeah. Be respectful uh, of yeah. Mr. Blank. Yeah, yeah. Be respectful of Mr. Blank. Be respectful of Peachtree. Be respectful of Northside Drive. Yes. And be respectful of the Mercedes Benz Stadium. That and, and that's it. They they will have a beer because it's you. a it's a it's and it's a beautiful stadium. Yes. They'll yes. have a they'll have a great Sunday. They really will. They'll have a beer. It's with a great you. state. Yeah, exactly. Have a beer. There's plenty of places to hang out. Yeah, now, you'll have a great time. Now, if someone says, "Hey, let's go hang out at the Bluff," run, <laughs> run. <laughs> there is on. I don't know if it's still on Netflix. It was an independent oh, film. Oh, uh, s- yeah, snowing on the Bluff. Snow yeah. on the Bluff. Number one. Yep. Don't go ask nobody for directions. Y'all got smartphones. You can put it. You can ask. You can ask Siri. You can ask Alexa. Yeah. You got Uber. It, you can go ask. Put anybody. it this way: just if you're walking, uh, just go towards State Farm. Don't venture on the other side of North Side, right, John? Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, here's some telltale signs that um, you know, you you might not be in the best places, and you you might let's just call it what it is. You might be in danger. Okay. Um, if there is a China Express, oh I'm God. sorry, not a China Express, a China, a China cafeteria. If there's a China cafeteria around, you might be in danger. Okay, just letting you know right now. Is it? Hey, is this your PSA for the night? Yeah, yeah I'm helping them out, huh? helping people out. All right, okay, uh, all if right. There is a church's chicken. You might be in danger. Okay, okay, I'm telling you right now. Is a church's chicken? Why? Why? Why churches, John? Let me ask you a question. What is the nearest church's chicken to your home? Uh, that's a good question. Exactly. I'm not really sure. Exactly. I'm not really okay. sure. I'm okay. Not really sure. You hear me? Okay. <laughs> There's no church's chicken within a 20 mile radius of you. I'm gonna tell you that right now. I'm not even 100 percent sure where your house is. Then a 20 mile radius ain't a church's chicken nowhere to be found. Okay. I'm just, are, are you in the are you in a radius of a church's no, chicken? I'm not. No. Okay. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. Okay. You know. Now granted, a chicken breast at church's fried chicken, one chicken breast can feed a family of five. That's a different story. But if you if they if you're near churches, don't go asking for directions. Okay. I'm just trying to help people out. I want people to come to Atlanta. It's a great city. It's a wonderful city. I I I I I've come here. I've made it my home. I grew up here basically. You have, but we want to make sure that people make it out of here safely. Okay, um, yeah. um, you know, there's some, there's some, just some telltale signs. Uh, if somebody says to you, "I got that good, good," oh God, <laughs> it's pre- for the news flash. It's probably bad, bad. You, it ain't you good, good. That. You don't want that. Okay? No, you don't. You don't want. No, that. you don't. You don't want that. No. Okay. Um, so I just want people to come here, be safe, be respectful, even, even if we win, even if we win, understand that you are an enemy hostile territory. Cause yeah, now, I want to help you out with some things here. By that point in time, the Atlanta Braves either a could have won the world series, which I doubt, or B, which is more likely to happen, have been eliminated from the playoffs <laughs> by now. Uh, that would, yes. And that's gonna, a safe bet. They're going to be upset by that. Yes, yes, they are. They're going to be. They're going to be hostile, John. So, I, they're going to be riled up. I'll. Yeah, ju- you know, just if you're coming, if you're traveling into Atlanta, enjoy the city. Because is like, uh, like you just said, man. We don't really have a lot to run our mouth about, you know. No. By that time, God knows what our record is going to be. We might still only have one win on the season, this is and true. it wouldn't be surprise me. And to be honest, it, I the Falcons are a better team than us. That's true as well. Yeah. Once. So I fully expect the Falcons to beat us. I really do. As a matter of fact, here's the neighbor, here's the southern thing to do. You you are you listening? You got your pen and paper handy? I'm right. Let's go. 
offer to buy someone a beverage. Oh, there you go. There offer you to go. Buy them a beverage. Whether yeah. it be sweet buy, tea. Buy a round. Sweet tea. Uh, uh, Crown and Coke. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 you know, whatever you can afford. Offer whatever, to buy whatever you, Whatever you like. Because I'm going to offer this part up to you as well. Around that time, basketball season will be in full swing. Yes. The Hawks will be playing at home. So here's what I would say to do. Here's what... His uncle John give us some some friendly uh, advice. Uh, oh, John! John, is this John travel agent? Yes, yes, yes. All right, okay. Yes. All right, all right. December twenty first at State Farm Arena. John Morant and the Memphis Grizzlies come to town. Okay, so okay. You, you can see John Morant. That would be that. What? So that's a, that's a Saturday. I believe so. Okay. Yeah. So that would so be that. That sa- even better. Let's back this up. Hold on. Yes. So that Saturday, come to town on Friday. Come into town okay. on Friday. Yeah. That Saturday, go see John Morant and the Grizzlies play the Hawks. Yeah. Sunday, go see the Falcons versus the Falcons Giants. Falcons Giants. Yeah. Stay in town because then that Monday, the 23rd, you get to see Ant-Man, a hometown favorite, and the yeah. Memphis Grizzlies take on the Atlanta Hawks. You make this a nice three-day weekend. That's a... Yeah, that's a that's a nice three day trip, man. I and, like that. Now, granted, that is December twenty fourth, the next day. So now you're trying to travel out of Hartsfield, Jackson, on Christmas Eve. Yeah, that's yeah. a you problem. Well, all right. So yeah, that is a that that is a, a them <laughs> problem. But uh, but even even if you uh, even if you did a uh, Friday Saturday, come home after the game Sunday or Monday morning. I mean that could that could work, John. That I mean, could work. You, now and look, if you really really. If you're single and you can handle this and you can swing it, here, here, you know, once again, here's Uncle Johnny giving you some. <laughs> Uncle Johnny, the travel agent. Uh, look, you, sound, you sound like you sound like you got a potential new side hustle here, man. Well, I mean, look, look at it this weekend here in Atlanta. You could have come to town. You could have this weekend would have been a great weekend to do it. Come to town yeah. on Saturday, mm-hmm. see the Braves play at yep. home, hang out. Yep. Go find a bar, see UGA yeah. lose to Alabama. Yeah. Sunday, go see the Falcons play. Yeah. Stay in town for Monday for a doubleheader with the Braves, and then that's a that's a hell home. of a that's a hell of a weekend of uh of sports right there, man. So, if you're a junkie, sports junkie, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. I'm just trying to give people some friendly tips, and that's whether you're a Giants fan. I want to be safe. I want the Giants fans to be safe. I don't want nobody to get hurt. I don't want it to look like the Bloods and the Crips are down there fighting because it's blue and red everywhere. <laughs> I just want people to be safe. I, I want people to to you know be smart. I think I think for the most part we'll be they'll be all right, John. I don't. I'm sure they'll probably be the occasional knucklehead, but. We'll we'll see what happens. Hey, we'll see what happens. You know it'll probably be a guy named Joey. Joey's Joey or Joey or Vinny, Dominic. I don't know. I'll even give you Vita. you know to to make sure my people are involved. Rashid, Rashid. <laughs> you know, Rashid, Rakim, Rakim, uh, 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 Devin, De- Devin. Yeah, Devin. Um, All right. they're gonna come down here, and they're gonna show. They're up. gonna make. They're gonna make a ruckus, John. Understand? I'm, I'm gonna bring you in close to this once again. I'm giving you a PSA. Some of the female Falcons fans are more dangerous than the men. Uh, that's a that actually that's a fantastic PSA right there, John. Some of the women are more dangerous than the men, so they might be. Yeah, they could be potentially barking up the wrong tree, real, and they'll find out real quick. So I just want to help. I just want, but like you said, <laughs> at that point in time, our record could be so bad. We're just coming to town just to see the city, and it just so happens there's a football game going on. Yeah, uh, <laughs> honestly, and realistically, that's probably going to be the case, John. It, let's <laughs> just be an honest, real, real talk. I mean, yeah, I, I, we could be still, we could be at one or two wins by that point in the season. I mean, at that point in time, just come to town, 
See Mercedes Benz Stadium. It's a beautiful stadium. It's an indoor yeah. state. It, it has a, like yeah. a, a sunroof. <laughs> cheap food, so cheap it's not, drinks. So it's not like MetLife where you got to be out mm-hmm. in the cold and the snow when yep. it's raining. Just yeah. take it in. Uh, maybe you meet some nice people that let you join them for a tailgate. Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. There's a oh, plenty of plenty of good tailgates in spe- in some of those lots around there. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, Keith, here's what we're gonna try to do for All long right. time followers. We're gonna work on this. We're gonna see if we can. Muster up. We know some people. We're going to have to figure out a way. We're going to see if we can come up with two tickets to the College Football Hall of Fame to give away for that weekend. All right. I, I'd, be, I'd, be, I'd be on board with that. We're going to see if I'd, we can come up with I'd, two I'd, tickets to give away. So somebody, okay. when you come into town, yeah, we'll get you two tickets you to co- the College Football Hall of Fame. You got something to do you, that weekend. Yeah. Just, hey, yeah. I, hey, I'm all for, I'm all for the giveaway, man. We just want to I'm do all, something nice. We want to yeah, do something nice. For exactly. People. I uh, Uncle John is feeling festive tonight. He's giving out PSAs. He's trying to do a giveaway. I like this, John. Oh, look, I just want people to be safe. Look, we've seen it. The the Chargers game. The people got beat up in the, the yep. Broncos Broncos Panthers game. The people mm-hmm. got beat up. I don't want to yep. see anybody fighting my city. Okay. Yeah, and I'm saying I'm my city you, because I live here. I pay taxes here, so I get to say that I pay taxes. This is it's right. This is this at this point. It's a uh, it's home. It's home for us, man. Yes, it's home. Because uh, Giants, I love you, but I ain't moving back to New York. Mm, no, I mean let's just nope. face it. Didn't the mayor just get indicted? Uh yes, uh he did. Uh yeah, there's <laughs> there's a lot of interesting things happening with Mayor Adams at the moment. Didn't he just get indicted? So I'm good, fam. Yes. I, I, I yeah, I can honestly I can't even believe he hasn't stepped down from office yet. <laughs> so I'm not exactly and I mean, granted, I get it. Bill Campbell was indicted too when I lived here, but uh, <laughs> I'm not exactly trying to rush up to a city where the mayor is being <laughs> indicted. I'm good, yeah. fam. <laughs> exactly, man. Yeah, you know. Exactly. <laughs> you can you can you can call me an apple that's in the middle of the peach. How about that? An apple that's in the middle of the peach. I like that, John. I not, like that. Uh, so I'm, I'm not going back up there. But anyway, this is the moment where we we've, we've clearly gone off the rails. But honestly, I, I'm gonna tell you right now, y'all probably could expect this the rest of the way because Giants are barring some sort of major miracle. Yes, uh, I foresee our future podcasts talking about um, where we're going to be in the draft order and who our future quarterback is. That's uh, that's what I foresee. Uh, one more thing I forgot, because, you know, once again, our football team is abysmal. So there's one more thing that I want to bring up. Um, All right. What I, you got? The WNBA. Okay. All right. They are in the playoffs and the New York Liberty. They are taking okay. on the Las okay. Vegas Aces right okay. now. And right. I, if y'all haven't caught up, I haven't been keeping up. I'm shame on me. I will say that. I missed the, I caught the first game of the semifinals, but they are yeah. currently in the semifinals for the playoffs. Um check them out. It is some great basketball, some fun, fun basketball going in it. Asia Wilson yeah, I'll be on- League MVP. I'll, yeah, I was gonna say, I'll be honest, like I haven't really, you know. Until probably this year, I haven't, you know, really kept up with it. But yeah, the the times I have watched the WNBA, they're actually they are they are entertaining games, man. So check them out. Matter of fact, um, at the time we're recording this is Monday. Uh, tomorrow, game two, the Liberty taking on the Aces at seven thirty. But you got the Liberty taking on the Aces and the Sun taking on the Lynx. I know, I know. Uh, people are upset. Oh, Caitlin Clark is out. Caitlin Clark is a phenomenal player. I'm not taking anything away from her, but not just because she's with the New York, just because she's with the New York Liberty, but she's also a really good player. Sabrina Inescu. I can't say her last name. It starts with an yeah. I. Uh, Sabrina mm-hmm. Inescu outstanding player love watching her yeah. play so yeah man taking the yeah WNBA. i mean yeah there's you know i've always i've always said i'm pretty sure you agree you know basically once uh you know august comes rolling around basically from now until 
March, basically, it's you've you got pretty much at some point you've got all the major sports going, and uh, it's uh, if you're a sports fan, it is the best time of the year, and that you know there is no debating that. So there's a lot going on, and the way the Giants are looking right now, frankly, we're probably going to talk about a lot of things. Cause, yeah, um, there's just not a lot of good, a lot of good to say about us right now. Yeah. But if you want to chime in, if you want to join in, uh, you can hit us up on Twitter, formerly known as or X, formerly known as Twitter, John Rad four fifty. Keith, what are you on there? Keith Fip eighty six. And I think don't we have a Twitter account? Sharedstadium dot com. Uh, no, no Twitter. We have an Instagram, Instagram account. Instagram. Yeah, so we have, yeah, we have an on, yeah Insta yeah. Follow us on follow us on the gram. Um, look, look I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Okay. Once again, some housekeeping. <clears throat> Young ladies, Keith is the single one. I'm married. <laughs> Don't go DMing me them things, okay? Send that to him. Jeez. Okay? Send that to him. Um, You know, and, and if you're sending him complimentary bottles of Johnson and Johnson baby oil. That's between y'all. That that I I don't I don't need any baby oil. I don't I'm out on the baby oil. <laughs> that's, that's between y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm out I'm out on the baby oil, John. I don't need I don't need I don't, no baby I oil. Need, I don't need to get involved with any of that. I'm a happily married man. So you know if y'all send the complimentary if y'all send him baby oil coupons send to him. That guy yeah. right over there. Nope, nope, nope. I, no, no Johnson and Johnson baby oil for me. I'm I'm good on that, John. I, mean, I just don't <laughs> need them things, so y'all send it to him. But other than that, if you got questions, if you got comments, if you want to chime in, you can sit us up there. You can hit us up uh on the on the gram, on the X, we're all over the place. We're active on social media. Um but other than that, the bottom line to all of this, the truth be told. We thank you guys for tuning in to us each and every week ish. Ish. <laughs> when yeah. life lives. But we thank you guys for yeah. tuning in. Uh, we're going to keep up with this. We're going to keep going on with this. We're going to keep talking about this. But frankly, at the end of the day, if you don't like us, fight us. Till next time. Deuces. Um...